you with us. Uh, we are uh, one month away from celebrating our first anniversary. Last January was our first session and uh, this Loud and Agile Network was formed because there wasn't a community uh, in Loudoun, uh, in Ashburn, Leesburg, Loudoun area. And that was pre-COVID and we really wanted to support uh, agility and promote agility in our area. And that's why it was formed. Um, our team is going strong and uh, we have been able to do, uh, this is our 12th presentation this year. And uh, we are so thankful and blessed to have all of you being part of this. And we look forward to, a, to continue our journey. I would like to invite you, if you're not part of our LinkedIn page, please do uh, become part of it. Uh, we do provide uh, feedback. We also support, uh, if anybody's looking for a job, we try to connect you. Uh, we also post snippets and videos and all kinds of fun stuff there. So please join us and become part of our community. Um, a couple of things about uh, Loud Nigel Network. Uh, we, we got a Zoom bombed uh, early spring this year. And ever since then, we invested, or actually our, our sponsor got us a Zoom webinar, which is more secure and safer. Uh, and I know it is not the same experience as a Zoom uh, normal call, where we can hear you and talk to you. Um, so that is an inconvenience. I know a couple of you pointed that out last time. Uh, but because your safety is extremely important to me, uh, to us, and we also don't want to get Zoom bombed, so we, you know, just taking that precaution. Um, so we will open up uh, towards the end for question and answers. Uh, but if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the Q and A section. Anju is our co-host for today, and she will be handling the questions. And towards the end, she will be posing those questions to our uh, great speaker, Anu. Uh, once again, thank you and join, thank you for joining us at Loud and Agile Network. So the topic of presentation today is really interesting, which is neutralize difficult people, don't get sucked into the mix. Our presenter today is Anu Gopal. Uh, she is a transformational coach, speaker, trainer, and a philanthropist. Uh, she has done amazing work uh, with Africa Agility, where she's the founder. She's also the first Black African certified Agile coach who has both CTC and CEC. Uh, she has organized Agile Africa Alliance, uh, which has about 1,000 partners. And uh, I don't know, I can talk maybe another half an hour about her, but that will take away <laughs> from our topic. She's just an amazing Agilist, and we are so lucky to have her here. So today she's going to talk to us about, you know, how people can make our life difficult and what are some of the things that we can do to kind of protect ourselves and protect them and kind of, uh, you know, different things that we can do to make that a better experience for all of us. So that's about Anu and that's about the topic. I also really quick put a plug for our January 1st anniversary presentation that we're gonna be doing. We will be presenting uh, somebody who's local, uh, Jesse Fevel. He's really well known in the area. His book recently got published. Um, and he is gonna talk about 20th anniversary of agility, reflections, tough questions, and surprising answers. I really love the topic. I hope you will join us in January where we will be celebrating. I, you know, we really wanted it to be a face-to-face -face where we could have a cake and you know, nice lights and everything, but uh, we will still be under COVID in January, but we will still celebrate and we really would like us to, like all of you to join us. With that, let's please welcome Anu Gopal. Anu, it's all yours. Thank you so much, Toby, for the introduction. Good evening, everyone. I'm excited to be here this evening. And I'm so much honored when Toby reached out to me asking if I can speak at the London Agile Network. And congratulations on your one year anniversary. Hopefully, I will be available to join because Jesse is a good, a good friend. And also, I call him my big brother from another. 
So it would be nice to actually hear Jesse speak again. Um, today's topic is neutralizing difficult people don't get sucked into the mix. And this is a topic that is very, very important to me. And I believe it's important to everyone on the platform this evening because we have all worked or lived with difficult people in our lives. Um, maybe when we are young, when we are growing up, even when we started our career and where we are right now. And COVID-19 actually made life difficult for so many of us. We have been locked down at home. Um, the human connection that we used to value and enjoy has been taken away because of COVID-19. And imagine you've been working with a difficult person or living with a difficult person and you have to work with that difficult person on Zoom. Can you imagine how stressful it's going to be or it would have been for us or for you? And if you are living with a difficult person, can you imagine being locked down with that person 24 seven? Our life could have been miserable for, for the victim. So um, the way we respond to these people actually affect how we think, how we live and how we survive and how we work, especially when you've worked or maybe you are working with a difficult boss. The first thing in your mind is maybe you just want to get out of this job. You want to leave this office. You love your team as an agile coach, as, as a scrum master. You love the organization. But the person that determines your bonus, the person that determines if you are going to get promoted is a very difficult person. How do you want to work with that person? Who do you want to be where you are in the presence of that person or you're having a com conversation or you are actually doing your performance review with such a person. Some people are it. And unfortunately, the truth is to be successful in our career as agile leaders, we have to be able to work with them effectively. But the good news is there are things that we can do and there are skills that we can actually embrace that we can learn, that can help us to live a healthy life, even if that difficult person never change. But we have to keep in mind that we will not be able to change that person, but most likely we won't even be able to exert a significant behavior, especially where rank or privilege is in place. Also, the more we focus on their faults, the more likely it's going to be very difficult for us to find any of their behavior desirable. And if we focus on this negative behavior, it leads to a lot of frustration, pain, even depression. I have a friend that had a difficult boss and she had depression. And at that point, you know, we were all young, new in our career. We didn't know what to do. This friend, she committed suicide because she could not take it any longer. And I'm sure some of us might have had people in similar situation they are, that are depressed because they are living or working with a difficult person. But the good news is we can't change them, but we can change who we want to be in every given situation. We have to approach them from the mindset of not how can I change them, but with the mindset of how can I change myself in order to work better with them or live a very happy and healthy life. So this is a little bit about me and um, thank you Toby for the introduction. The first thing we are going to do is we'll go to menti.com and we're going to use the code 2178318. You can grab your phone, you can grab your iPad or you can go on your desktop or your laptop. Go to menti.com, enter the code 217. 
318. What is a type of stress you have experienced in dealing with a difficult person? What is a type of stress that you have experienced in dealing with a difficult person? I'm going to go to word cloud now so that I can see responses. What is a type of stress that you have experienced in dealing with a difficult person? So once you're on menti.com, just start dumping those stress. Oh, wow, love. Hey, Anu, what is the code again? I can put um, it in the, the chat box. 2178318. It's actually showing on the screen as well. Frustration, misunderstanding. Oh, I love that. Love, joy, happiness. That's really good. Frustration, misunderstanding is standing out. Happiness, pain, anxiety, anger. Yeah. I resigned from my former job because of so much frustration and anger from my former boss. So pain is actually standing out. Anger is standing out as well. Fear, yeah, stress, sadness. Oh, I think I have been negative. And this is where vulnerability comes in and honesty. Being self-aware of, mm, maybe I'm actually the negative person. Pain, anger, thank you, stress. Yeah, it's actually, it can lead to exhaustion. Physical muscle tension, uncertainty on outcome, procrastination. Thank you, thank you so much for dumping all this. Yeah, these are the type of stress that we can actually experience. It could be either negative, it could either be positive. And this stress could drive us crazy, but this stress could also inspire us to become a better version of ourselves. And let me tell you a story. When I was at, um, I resigned from my job at Toyota, you know, you could imagine, how could somebody resign from a lifetime job, right? This is a lifetime, you know, you have a good relationship with the executive as the executive coach. You are doing so well. Everybody, even up to the CEO, so much loves you. But the person you are reporting to is giving you a lot of pain, a lot of stress. And I couldn't take it any longer than my blood pressure um, was the last about 120. My husband was so scared and he said, you know what? You are going to resign tomorrow. He actually wrote the resignation letter for me. You are turning this and you are res resigning with immediate effect because you have three young children that you need to take care of. There are better jobs, there are better opportunities out there, but you can't be going to work in fear that what is going to happen tomorrow? What is another problem or challenge that this person is going to bring up? I was constantly afraid. Anytime I see this person, I just want to take the next exit because I was so scared of him. All right. So recent research actually shows that from the Department of Biological and Clinical Psychology, Psychology at Friedrich Schiller University in Germany, actually found that, that the stimuli exposure we get when dealing with difficult people can cause the human brains to have a massive and emotional stress response. Whether it is negativity, cruelty, the victim syndrome, or just plain craziness, difficult people can drive the brain into a stressed out state that should be avoided at all costs. So today we are going to focus on how to assess this behavior that, has, that are perceived as problematic and also discover the strength behind them. For instance, from a strength perspective, an individual that is perceived as demanding could instead be considered as determined or maybe result-driven or goal-driven. So in this inter interactive, interactive session, 
you will learn how to view the behaviors of others as a strength and also learn the approach that you can find challenging in a very positive way. So we are going to spin that negative behavior into a positive spin. So for this exercise or activity, you are going to have your pen and your paper with you. And I hope you have your pen, your paper, or anything that you can write on with you. So the first thing we are going to do is to consider a difficult person. I would like you to take a few moments to think about someone you find very difficult to deal with. This could be someone at work or perhaps a family member. Once you have that person in mind, I would like you to think about a I know we lost your voice. Hey, Anu, we can't hear you. Are you on mute? Just. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. All right. So I would like you to consider a difficult person. So take a few. Can you hear me? Thank you again. Okay. So take a few moments to think about someone that you find difficult to deal with. This could be somebody that you work with or somebody that is a family member or a friend. When you have that person in mind, think about a specific occasion that you found the behavior of that person to be challenging for you. So take a few minutes, think about that difficult person, the name of the person, and also write down the name and write down the behavior that you found very challenging for you. So we're going to take like 90 seconds to do this. All right, so I hope everybody has written something down. So the next step is to examine the difficult behavior. So write down what exactly happened for this specific occasion what exactly happened for this specific occasion and the challenging behavior that you wrote down? What emotions did you experience at that time? Claiming that something is wrong with my Zoom. I hope you can see, hear me. Yeah, Maybe you, it's my volume. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. So in what ways might your emotions influence your negative reaction to this person? And this person may be somebody that 
has triggered negative emotion in you so many times. So in what ways might your emotions have influenced your negative reaction to this person? Also, I would like to consider what personal beliefs might have influenced your reaction to this person at that time. So look at it from the value perspective. What values of yours has been challenged? And the last question for examining the difficult behavior. What assumptions or bias did you make about the person and their behavior? So think about what are some bias that you have created about the person and their behavior. I'm going to give you another 90 seconds to think this, to think about this and write it down. Don't overanalyze, don't overthink it. Just make it simple. Agile principle, simplicity. So we're going to look at this difficult behavior from a different lens. Most often, we do not see the full picture when it comes to people that we find very challenging to be around with. We only see the aspect that supports what we already believe or think or imagine about them. So in this step, you refer to the negative behavior that you have identified in step one. And you're going to consider how these attributes could be seen in a more positive light. So we're going to change the challenging trait into positive trait, for instance, Stubbornness could be seen as determination. And imagine maybe the difficult person, maybe your spouse or your colleague is very lazy. The positive spin is maybe this person is actually laid back. So I'm going to give you a few minutes. I have some examples on the screen. You know, a difficult behavior. Let's say this person nags all the time. My mom nags all the time. Like when I was, I couldn't wait to leave my family house. You know, my dad is quiet, but my mom, she picks on everything. But if I look at it from a positive spin, she's really concerned about me. She's concerned about my health, my success. And she's honestly trying to bring out the best in me. And sometimes maybe a difficult behavior could be this person is just overconfident. Maybe the person is just bold. The positive spin is the person is brave. 
or me, another difficult behavior is maybe this person is very nosy, intrusive, just want to put their face in everything that I do. When we look at it from a positive spin and we remove the lens of our, our own assumptions and bias, trying to get to know the person better, maybe this person is just curious. Maybe this person just likes to learn about new things. So consider that negative trait or behavior and turn it into a positive trait. Just look at it from a positive lens instead of that negative lens. As many of you that, were, that are familiar with the SCARF model, the example I gave about my former place of work the negative behavior that triggered this person that I love so much, we had a good relationship was threat of status, which is the first threat on the SCARF model. Because so many things happen in the organization and this person was threatening that, oh, is she going to take over my job? Are they going to fire me? And, you know, so I was just focused on the negative behavior without without considering what could have triggered a change in behavior. So I'm going to give a few minutes. Just think about the positive behavior and find a way that you can spin it. Once you are done, Toby, I didn't, I forgot to mention to you that we might need breakout room. Is this still possible? Toby. Yeah, Anu, you should be able to do breakouts. Do you need assistance from us? Uh, uh, you are a co-host. You should be able to do breakouts. Oh, no. It's only the host that can open breakout room. Co-host okay. cannot. Yeah. No problem. How many breakout rooms? It depends on how many. So we have 32 people. Let's do five. Bear with me a second to see if I have... If I have the ability to do that, give me one second. Thank you. Uh, I am not seeing the option right now, but. Uh, okay. I can't see the option as well. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's fine. That, that's okay. We can just have open discussion. Okay, no problem. Yeah, uh, but when we were prepping, had you told me, I would have uh, set it up at that point. Uh, I cannot stop the uh, event right now. Sorry, no, but it's fine. No, no, it's okay. I, it's, I should have told you. <laughs> no, no problem. No problem. That is where assumption comes in. Like, oh, all the <laughs> Zoom functionality. Yeah, webinar has some restrictions. So, but yeah, no problem. All right. I want to believe that we are done with this um, with this part of the exercise. Then let's think about reflection. This is the part that I love so much. Um, I was telling to the before nice for a second. I know we cannot hear you. But I okay. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. So I was telling Toby before we started this session that I've, this is the first time that I'm actually using this tool, but I'm mixing a little bit of um, organization relationship system coaching um, to together with this. And I've applied it to my personal life <laughs> as well, because I used to live with somebody that was so difficult. Actually, I still live with it. Mm, well, the person went on vacation. <laughs> but we are, I'm seeing things from a positive lens instead of. I know. <laughs> All right. So now let's do a reflection. So let's look at the positive attribute that we've just listed. And you can answer this question, write it down as well. 
what can you appreciate about this strength, especially when you've turned a negative behavior and you spin it around in a positive lens? What can you appreciate about this strength? In what other situations might this strength be useful? Can you think of any occasion when you have used this strength yourself? And while thinking about that specific occasion, did it help you to achieve your goal or overcome your challenge? Now, instead of looking at that person from a negative lens, let's think about other things that this person do particularly well. So if you are to compliment this person on three things, what would they be? You may spend, you may take your time to really think deep about this because every difficult and bad, difficult people, don't let me use the word bad people, difficult people, they also have something to contribute, something positive. Okay. then instead of looking at this person from a negative perspective, because you can't change this person, but you can change yourself. You can change who you want to be and how you want to be for your own sanity and for your own health. What could you change about the way that you view this person and their behavior? Can you guys still hear me? Good. Yeah, you, you're fine. We can hear you. Oh, okay. Because I keep seeing something coming up that I'm muted. Are you fine? So if you focus, oh, thank you. If you focus your attention on the strength rather than on negative aspects of their behavior, how might this situation have ended differently? And this year has been difficult for most of us in different ways. And this year is coming to an end. 2020, 2020 chapter is closing and we are going into 2021. At this point in our lives, we don't want to take grudges, pain, fear, frustration, procrastination, and all the things that we itemized in menti.com. We don't want to take it into 2021. We want to enter 2021 as a new person, as a happy person, who you want to be, how you want to live. 
for me, my joy, my happiness is very important to me. And I want to believe it's important to all of you as well. So since we can't change them, we can change who we are. So Let me stop the slideshow and I can see, oh, I've forgotten that I can't see everybody. I can only see Toby and you and Laxmi. All right. So let's, <laughs> so instead of you going into breakout room to share the difficult person, the difficult behavior, the positive spin and your reflection, let's, is it possible to hear from some people? Can they talk? Andrew? Yeah, if they, I think if they, if they, uh, if they put uh, on the chat window, we can get folks to talk. So if, uh, okay. if we're opening it up for questions, is that what it is? Yeah, so just to hear from some people, what did they come up with? Okay. Yeah. So uh, people, please put in the chat window if you want to share uh, your uh, uh, share your ideas with the rest of the team. Okay. So we should have at least one volunteer to share. Or so let's hear from some of you. Okay. So again, a request to put it there, your name, if you want to share, else we'll pick someone and unmute you to speak. <laughs> I don't think anyone so is Gail, going to uh, um, to... So, uh, Toby, can we unmute Gail? There we are. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. It's very good. Thank you, first of all. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you, Gail. So um, <clears throat> I had, um, I thought of one person, but one person I couldn't flip my lens on because they were just awful. So I thought about another person. <laughs> um, and actually this is more recent. This person is, they're kind of always saying underhanded things and making comments. And um, I had to have a conversation to them about their intentions. But what I realized is that they were just being honest and they're going through some frustration on their own. And they're trying to help the team out. Uh, by getting them to work faster. So, you know, that helped me understand where they were coming from and that they were being honest. So it allowed me to be more honest with the team as well. Mm. That's really good. Sometimes we just need to sit down with this person and have a conversation. Some, they be, some people behave in a way that they are just unconscious about their behavior and the impact on their, of their behavior on others. So sitting with them and or having one-on-one -on -one conversation with them, it's it's a very positive, it's also a positive spin as well. Thank you so much for sharing, Gail. Um, Shiria mentioned that, okay, I get sucked into the next Sharia, you should be able to talk. Can see. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, now. 
Sherry, we, uh, we open your can line. Can you hear me? If you want to talk. Uh, yes, we can hear you. Yes, Anu, we can hear Hello? you. And Sharia is typing that she is not able to talk. She can only text. Okay. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay, no I problem. I don't know. So, B, can you still hear me? Anju? Yes, we can hear yeah, we you. Can hear you fine, uh, uh, Anu. So, B. Yeah, we can hear you. Hello. I think, uh, Toby, she cannot hear us. Right? Yeah, I think she has uh, challenges with the headphones she might be using. Uh, it's cutting on and off. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we, we can, can hear you. Oops. Hello? Oh, you can hear me. Oh, thank you. Everything okay. I thought I was speaking to myself again. So Shira, would you like to share a little bit more on what you posted on chat? Shira, I noticed that she joined and she left again. Um, yeah, I think uh, she can only chat. She cannot speak. Maybe she's in a... Uh... Oh, okay. Surroundings where she cannot uh, talk. Um, so, so let, let's stop. I had a question. Okay, continue. I had a question okay. when I was going through what you were thinking, uh, what you were mentioning. So a lot of uh, the things that you mentioned are excellent and great questions. And what came to my mind is that uh, dealing with a difficult person, um, you know, we are putting a positive spin and looking at them with a different lens. But is it also important to give them the feedback somehow that their behaviors, their um, things that they're doing, maybe unknowingly, uh, is causing harm to others? So yes, we can neutralize uh, by using a different lens uh, or creating a buffer. But is it also important to tell them, uh, you know, and what, 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 are, what are your suggestions for that? I would love to hear that. Can you hear me? Yes, now we can hear you. Good. Yes. So that is actually the first step. If I'm working with a difficult person or I'm living with a difficult person, communication is the most important thing. I want to meet with the person and there are different feedback techniques. There's FBI, there, is, there are so many um, feedback techniques that are out there to give feedback to the person. So, so, so um, talk about the situation. So when we are having XYZ meeting or blah, 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 Anu, we lost you again. This is... Anu, there's something, uh, your, your headphone connection keeps cutting off. Are you using headphones? She doesn't know. We cannot hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, so so that's a very the setting we have now is working. Please keep in the same setting because it somehow changes the setting looks like. It's just changing as if somebody is in control of my laptop. I didn't touch it. Okay. <laughs> so um, it's, I've been feeling as if somebody is in control of my laptop. So I don't know what's going on. Maybe I need to go and check. I you see things moving that you can't see. You need and to I'm not watching. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what is going on. That's so maybe my laptop point. has been laptop bombed. <laughs> so Toby, that's a valid point. The first thing is that you want to have a conversation with a person um, to know if this person is intentionally behaving like this, being difficult, or maybe the person is just unconscious of their behavior. And there are some times that this person is actually mean and they are not going to change. 
there is nothing you can try different approach. You can talk to them 100 times and nothing is going to change. The example I gave, I've lost count of how many times I spoke to this boss of mine. You know, I even cried. It was really bad. I cried. And, oh, you did nothing. Oh, you are good. Oh, I don't have any problem with you. But the behavior did not change. So what can we do if this behavior is very intentional? So this is what I do. The first thing I do is I have a conversation with you. If the behavior does not change, I will bring in a third party to facilitate the conversation, especially a coach. There are different coaching. I know, again, we lost you. Am I still here? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we now we can hear you. Yeah. So I will bring in a coach to facilitate the conversation. And if still, still nothing changed, I will start taking, I will start jotting things down. I'm going to have a journal and start writing things down. Because if this behavior con continue and is affecting me, affecting the way I work, psychologically, mentally, and everything. The last thing may be an HR matter. Mm. So you may need to involve. We can't hear you, Anu, again. It's affecting the way I work. Then the last result is, is it that I leave or I report to HR? So uh, Sharia is asking, uh, since she cannot unmute, she has put her question right out there. I have coworkers that are, constant, that are consistently negative and get upset if I do not agree with them. Then I get sucked in and become infected with her negativity. How do I stop getting sucked in and support this person without agreeing and becoming infected? <laughs> Thank you, Shira, for that question. So the first thing I want to do is to start for myself, you know, with myself, right? Um, if my coworkers are, are co I, I see them as consistently negative. I want to see if there's something I'm doing that is making all of them to be negative towards me because the problem might be with me. So I want to do an assessment of myself. Or if I have somebody that is actually part of the meeting, I want the person to be able to give feedback. So in this meeting, am I the difficult person or are they the difficult people? Because the problem may actually be hers. Especially when we have that assumptions and by hers. These people don't like me. These people, when I say something, they take a negative spin about anything I say. Maybe it's a bias thing, or maybe it's me, or maybe it's actually them. So that's the first step that I will take. Then after the assessment and the evaluation, if I actually found out that they are the difficult people, I want to understand why are they difficult towards me? Why are they negative towards me? So this could be one-on-one -on -one conversation. You may not want to do a... I don't know. Let me ask you again. Oh God, I don't know what's going on. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. This is a terrible experience um, with this Zoom thing. And my, my network is good. I don't know what's going on. So I'm, Sh I'm Shiria. I'm going to have one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. I'm going to give feedback, just like what Toby and, um, and Gail shared. Mm -hmm. 
So this is, uh, these are the things that have been going on and this is how it's making me feel. And you want them to speak up as well. There are some revelations. I know we cannot hear you again. We cannot hear you, Anu. We cannot hear you. Sorry, you're going through this. No. Yeah, I don't know. So some technical difficulty, I think, from your laptop because the, uh, we can hear the rest of us okay through the through the Zoom call. Do you think if she uses dial-in or phone, that might be helpful? Because I see clearly there's a delay. Yeah. Anu, you want to, do you want to dial-in from your phone? Can you try that? We're almost on time, but uh, I still want to make sure that your topics are. Can't hear you, Anu. Okay. Uh, no problem. Oh. Anu, can you? Yeah, I, we could hear you just now. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank God. I'm so. I'm so sorry. Um, I, I don't know what is going on. So I was telling Sh um, Shira that I like to use jewelry window as a tool to get feedback from my team especially from the people that I'm finding very difficult mm. so that they can help me to identify my blind spots as well. So when they give you assessment from jewelry window, that will actually help you to understand what is actually going on. Mm. We lost you again. Again. I don't think Toby it's going to work. Yeah. Toby's 756. Yep, yep. Six. You want to finish your thought on Johari window? Yeah, can you see hear me? Yes. Okay. So let me reach my screen since to make it easier. So I love to use Johari window as a self-awareness and personal development. Yeah, I can, I'm going to share it, um, Tiana. So when you look at the jewelry window, it actually has four grades. Um, the first thing is that what do you know about yourself and is also known to others? So you are doing your own personal self-assessment and at the same time, your team is assessing you on this first grade. Then the second one is this is the most important part. What are the things that you are not aware of? There is self, um, you are, there's, there's no self-awareness on this second part of the grade. But your team or your co-workers can actually tell you about your blind areas. Oh, nice. 
Then the third one is, what are the eating areas? So this, the first, the number one and two is all about feedback solicitation. Then the third breed is about self-discovery. This is something that you know about yourself, your triggers that is unknown by others. It's good for us to actually identify it as well and put it down, write them down. Then the fourth part is, what are the things that you are not conscious of, you are not aware of, and others doesn't know about you? How can you discover, do a self-discovery? This is where coaching comes in, especially when you talk to a professional coach. They can mm -hmm. help you uncover this area. I see. Okay. Thanks for sharing that. Awesome. We again lost her. There's a question from uh, Tiana. Will handouts be sent? I will send it to Toby and Toby can share it as well. Okay. Yeah, she's put a note, uh, interesting topic. Uh, just in the question box, you cannot ask or send them anonymously. Yeah. So okay. I will send, yeah, I'll send it yeah. to Toby. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Anwar, and we will share it with everyone. Again, thank you so much, Anu, for joining us today and sharing your wisdom and thoughts on these topics. Uh, I know we had some um, audio uh, challenges, but uh, we, we, you know, we still have everybody who joined us and we had six Anus. We were looking for one Anu, we got six Anus, so that's excellent. Uh, again, uh, we have Jesse Fevel, who's gonna join us uh, in January. Uh, and we wish everyone happy holidays and we will look forward to seeing you here in January uh, when we'll be, we celebrate our first anniversary. Uh, so thank you, Anu, for a grand closeout of uh, 2020 and uh, thank you everyone for joining and we look forward to seeing you. Please do join our LinkedIn group. I have put um, the link on the chat window. Please do join and stay connected with us. Stay safe and we'll see you again.